G'day there. Uh, today I'm going to do a really quick video on how to set the trigger on one of these little handheld portable DSO 203 oscilloscopes so that you can get a stable waveform on your screen rather than one that moves around all crazy like. And I'll just move my thingy. So if you set your trigger wrong, you're going to get waveforms that do stuff like that. And that's really annoying because you can't really see what it, what's going on. And in some cases, I'll see if I can demonstrate, you can actually not have a clue what's going on at all. Uh, yeah, there we go, look. Yeah. That waveform, jumping around like crazy, has absolutely no resemblance to the actual waveform that you get when the trigger is set correctly. So what is the trigger? Well it's the point where the waveform actually starts. So you can see a little orange line down the screen there and you'll notice a yellow line that is now moving up and down. Or up in this case, up here. Where those two lines cross, that is the trigger point. And you can set a bunch of different trigger points. I've got, I'm using some old firmware here, but if I go up into this corner and I press this button, I can choose my colours, we want yellow, I press that toggle again and I can choose a bunch of different trigger modes, I've got stuff to do with the voltage measurement feature which is these two white lines down here I don't know how to use that, there's greater and lesser than symbols though and there's a time measurement feature which is those two white lines and these figures come out here and here, voltage on the top and time underneath um, I don't know how to use any of that stuff so I just scroll through until I get the one with the arrow, and I don't know if this camera is going to focus, but there's a down arrow displaying there now. And you can also go with the up arrow. And all that says is when there's either a rising for the up arrow or a falling waveform for the down arrow, it will trigger where those two lines cross. And then I press that toggle down again to choose the to cycle through the different options, as you should know if you're familiar with using these scopes and I can then move that trigger line around until I find a point where it triggers stably without jumping all over the place so I'll change that voltage divisions again so we can get a better look and I'll demonstrate a little bit more about what I mean there so at the moment I've got it set on a falling trigger so as this line falls down past the orange line and the yellow line crossing that cross point of the trigger, that's where it triggers. But if I move this trigger down along, say, this line here where there's multiple different falling edges that it can trigger off, that's when it starts to go all crazy like. And we can't see anything. Or if even worse, I can move it all the way down the bottom You'll see again down low we've got a spot where there's a single peak that's regular and we can get a stable trigger. But if I go down even further past that, then we lose all resolution and it just goes totally spastic and just tells you gibberish. Not very handy. So that's about it. That's how you set the waveform, set the trigger on one of these little hand scopes. Now there's a whole bunch of different firmwares out there, I haven't updated this in ages so you might be using a different one but um, hopefully this quick tutorial will have helped you set the trigger and get a stable waveform on your scope. Thanks for watching.